So good evening, everyone. Welcome to Advanced Careers UK Career Launch Clinic, November 2022. Today's Career Launch Clinic is titled How to Use Your CV to Increase Your Income Without Gaining Additional Experience or Skills. Six critical steps to achieve or boost your CV. Six critical step to increase your income without altering a word to the employer. Six critical steps to get a salary raise without requesting salary raise from your own employer directly, which is one thing that we, we struggle with. All right, my name is David Ageba and I am your anchor for today's event. So what you will learn today, what is a CV and why is your CV very important to your career? The modern day CV structure and how you can use your CV to increase your income without additional experience or skills. And then I'll do a Q&A at the end of today's Now, I'm going to start with a famous quote from a famous man, okay? And this is the most powerful quote I have ever known of when it relates to my career from Richard Branson, who once stated that if someone offers you a job, If someone offers you a offers you an amazing opportunity, but you are not sure you can do it, say yes, then learn how to do it later. Or just go about learning how to do it as well. So when someone offers you an amazing opportunity, but you are not sure you can do it, say yes then learn how to do it later. And this, this um, quote is so powerful that I have dealt with several students and a lot of the time I see students selling themselves short, okay? Um, and not knowing how to package yourself properly. Now, some of you think that all of your skills must be developed through an employed job or there are other skills that you develop outside employed job that you can put together package yourself properly and boost your cv in such a way that when you are employed and when you get that amazing opportunity even if you don't know as much as you you think you should know you can still carry on, but by then you have landed a job with a great pay package. So that is the essence of today's session, how you can sell yourself a lot better than you currently do. So what is a CV or a resume? I got this quickly from Indeed. If a CV, also known as curriculum VT or a resume, is a written overview of your skills, education, and work experience. Okay, a written overview of your skills, education, and work experience. Now, among these three things, skills, education, work experience, one, one stands out the most. And that one that stands out is where I, I call this the, um, the stumbling block for a lot of people. Because you do not know how to show your experience on your CV, because you have the wrong notion that all experience must be gathered from 
either paid employment, okay? Not knowing that there are some experience that are gathered from voluntary work, whether official voluntary work or not, in a community that you belong to, okay? You can pick up skills there that you can still highlight on your CV, and that skills can still hold water and hold true because it is the same thing that you would be expected to do on the job that you would have already done in this non-paid voluntary work that you might have done in the past. So why your skills is very important to your career? Number one, your, your CV rather, why your CV is very important to your career? Number one, it is your first impression, okay? Um, the employer don't know you, they don't know your face. They never met you before, but your CV is the first impression and your first impression must count. In short, your first impression determines your salary ahead of time, okay? If you have a CV of three years experience, it shows that you are a junior going towards a mid-level, you have junior slash mid-level skills and experience. And some of us make this mistake when we are transitioning into another role. You might have already gathered seven years experience, but you develop a new CV with just three years experience, losing up to four years experience that you have gathered in the past. Uh, sometimes even more than four years experience, more than seven years experience, because there are some experiences that you have gathered outside of work as well. So maybe, your work experience and outside of work experience might be up to eight to nine years experience, but you now do a CV of three years experience. So you will be pursuing a job of a junior level. But if you do a CV of seven years experience, you are or you've already increased your your income or your potential salary without even altering a word. Number two, it determines your rate of securing an interview. Your, your CV determines the rate at which you secure an interview. Some people will create a CV and they don't get any interview but secured because the CV does not translate their skills and experience and also it does not match what the employer is looking for. Number three, it determines your potential salary ahead of interview. Okay, it's your first impression. Um, it determines your rate of securing interview spots. It determines your potential salary ahead of the interview. So your CV will determine that because your years of experience, your skills, your achievements, you know, what you've done in the past, if, you, if it is not well packaged, it determines your salary ahead of time. It determines your negotiation power, okay? So after the interview, if you've done well, they kind of come start negotiating a salary of a junior staff with you, whereas you are shown an experience of 10 years, okay? So you have a better negotiation power when your CV is well packaged. And also a CV is an essential part of your job, any job search. It is a great way to put all of your skills, all of your skills, experience, qualification in one place, all right? So this is why your CV is very important to your career. So the modern structure of a CV, um, you have your personal details, your professional summary, your skills, your experience, your education and qualification, hobby and reference which is always on demand these days so when i talk about personal details all you need would be how you will be contacted not your house address not your date of birth okay just your first name your last name your profession your profession okay your email address and your phone number please guys can you can you still see my screen? Can yes, you see David. 
All right, fantastic. Yes, right. yes. Okay, great. So your the reference is always on demand. Um, and at Advanced Careers UK, we don't even issue reference until you have landed the job. You know, these days we are in the data protection age. We are in the data age. So in about 20 years ago, not even 10 years ago, or probably some 10 years ago as well, people still include reference details on their CV. And then they distribute the CV to 2,000 companies, distributing their references detail to anyone that can pick that one up, their, their phone number, their email address, and they can use that for marketing purposes. So you don't need that anymore in the modern day CV, okay? So now we know what a CV is, a summary of your skills, your education, your experience. We know why we need it for our job hunt and the role it plays, and also the modern day, um, structure of the modern day CV. Now, how can you increase your salary by revamping your CV? Okay, the fifth critical step to boost your salary by tweaking your CV. Trust me, a lot of us have not put our CV the way we should. And then we are selling ourselves short most of the time. So let's look at the six critical steps, all right? So these six critical steps include leveraging. Your CV must be 100% focused on one job title include in-demand skills. So your CV must include in-demand skills, not outdated skills, okay? You need to figure out, I want to become a data analyst. What is the 10 in-demand skills in data analysis? Do I have those 10 skills on my CV? Okay, there are 20 skills in project management that are in demand. Do I have that 20 skills on my CV? You don't know what an employer might be asking for. It must include key results and achievements. Okay, now this is what you have contributed to past organizations. It must include key results and achievements, not just responsibilities, okay? It must also include top professional certificate or professional body. Now, some of you might say, uh, David, you always say the certificate does not give you the and uh, guarantee you the job. Yes, it does not guarantee you the job. However, it guarantees it might it might guarantee you an interview spot and also it might also increase your negotiation power. That is what I call professional branding. Okay. So your so part of branding yourself is to get that certificate or it doesn't hurt when you say that it is in view. We'll look at that as well. The strategies you can use even if you have not sat down for the exam. And also you focus more on your skills and experience. Okay? Focus more on your skills and experience. So these are the six critical steps to boost your salary by tweaking your CV. So let's look at each of them one after the other. So what do we mean by leveraging? Okay, so leveraging is all about clawing back time with past experience and projects you might have worked or delivered in the past. So now you are transitioning, okay? Or you just want to you, you've been in a salary bracket for some time and you want to increase your income and you've gone to your employer and your employer say next year, next year, next year, okay? All right? These days, if you stay in a company for five years, you, you, you deserve an award. So what do you do? You go back to your CV. You go back to the project you did for your family. You go back to the project you did for your for your for your church, your mosque, or your organization. Or as you are 
you are switching career to another field entirely, but the job title is going to be different. However, you have built those transferable skills. And these transferable skills are needed in every industry, communication, problem solving, critical thinking. Okay, so you have to put all of these past experiences together and then flow back time so that your CV appear with more years of experience. Now, the question is why? It will show you are more experienced. So you work in banking for, for, for 15 years, and then you want to become a project manager or a business analyst. And then you want to create a CV that has 15 years banking experience, and then three years as a project manager or a business analyst. Trust me, that CV would not fly. However, that 15 years that you have worked at in banking, if you can package all of those transferable skills and build a CV with at least 12 out of that 15 years, it will show that you are more experienced. Already, your income or your salary has increased. I can give an instance. I don't know if um Sukomi Dimo is here. She hardly joins our event these days. Um, she did, she worked in banking in Nigeria, came to the UK and um, did the training with us. Um, I think we did did her CV for her. We clawed back time. Her first role before she started, they increased her salary twice. Now, when she was leaving that job and moving to the next job. They offered her about 76,000 pounds per annum. And they were still asking her, do you think this is enough? And this is somebody that opened her mouth. She could not close her mouth on that phone. She could not believe her eyes. In less than two years in the UK, 76,000 pounds per annum. And they are still asking her, is that enough? OK? It shows that you can be trusted if you have more years experience on the job. It shows that you can be trusted. And once you can you, you show experience, it shows that you can be trusted. Definitely your salary automatically is boosted. Step number two, your CV must be 100 percent focused on the role. OK, if you are transitioning into a new role, make sure that your CV is 100 percent created for that role. You we would use step number one strategy by leveraging. OK. And we've dealt with a lot of students that when we help with their CV, they say, I have done web development. I have done um, graphic design. I have done this. I've done that. And you want to become a business analyst, it would not, those graphic design, web development would not help your case. It would rather harm you. Um, is it Dr. Chidi? I don't know if Dr. Chidi is here. A medical doctor did a project management with us and also got the Advanced Career UK team to do his CV. All right. When he sent the CV to his friend, he is in Nigeria, but he sent his CV to his friends here in the UK. The guy said, wow, this one will fly anywhere. And in less than no time, he landed a PM job. But if we have put medical doctor um, and um, surgeon and all of those things there, it will conflict. So your CV must be 100% focused on the role. Now, why? It avoids distraction from what employers are keen on, your current skills and experience. Now, by leveraging, the number of years on your CV is increased. So you are transitioning, but you are clawing back time. The number of years on your CV increases. And automatically, as the number of years increases, obviously, your, your salary is boosted as well. You are more likely to secure 
interviews with focus CV than with CV with multiple job title. Imagine you have a CV, um, project management. It has an um, accountant, an oil and gas engineer, all put together. Even you yourself, you'll be confused. And I've dealt with such case in the past when a student came from another training institute and she wanted a hybrid job, project management and business analyst on one CV. Project management requires different skill sets. BA requires different skill sets, even if you have the skills in these two. Let's focus your CV, please. That's what we did. Within three weeks, she landed her first BA job. So focus is key, okay? You are likely to be employed in a senior position. I wanted to share on my slide, I forgot to do that. Most of the role secured in October is senior this, senior that, senior BA, um, senior analyst, um, senior project manager. You guys are aware of that. It is because of this strategy and as you are employed for senior roles, your average salary in the UK is above 60K. Remember what Richard Branson said, if somebody gives you a fantastic opportunity, take it and go about learning how to do it. But your first impression must be key. Step number three, include most in-demand skills, okay? Go search for all of the in-demand skills for that role. There is magic that that will do for you. Now sprinkle your CV with as many in-demand skills as possible to make you stand out. Remember, you are employed for your skills and ability or abilities to do the job. All right, you have gap analysis skills, you have stakeholder management skills, you have workshop skills, you have requirement skills, you have um, skills in using DCO. You can use balsamic to draw wireframe. You know how to do user research. Package everything that so that whichever job that is posted, whichever job opening, if they, out of the, let's say they have 20 in-demand skills in business analysis, and each of these jobs are only including five to 10. So by, when you include 20, there is no job opening or vacancy that your CV would not match. When you sprinkle your CV with enough in-demand skills, you are likely to meet most of the, most of all of the demand of the employers. You pass through automated CV review application easily. Note that before even a recruiter sees your CV, they have all of these applications that will review your CV and push it somewhere else and automatically send you an email that, sorry, this time around, we cannot move forward with you. That is not human being that does that. It is an automated system. How many CVs can they review at a, at a time as humans? The system has already done the, done the review and selected only three CVs to move to the next stage. So you can beat the machine and beat the humans at the same time. It increases your chances of securing interview spot where you sprinkle your CV with enough skills and experience and increase your negotiation power. It also obviously boosts your potential salary as well. Step number four include key results and achievements. Mind you, you might be working on a project, but what is your contribution to that project? What is your contribution to that organization? What is your contribution to the result that was achieved? So it is not just listing out five, six, 10 responsibilities. You must include your, the results you have helped the company to achieve and your achievement. You should also include results and, and achievement section. Pro, pro, probably after every 
road or if it's going to make your CD to be too lengthy, have a section for results and achievement. So you are employed for results you can bring to the organization. If you study the results required of your role and include them on your CV, you will see a great upward shift in your salary. Now, why this? It shows you have what the, they need to achieve their desired results. If the job you're applying for is in media, and for some reason you've done, even if it's a private project, even if it's an unpaid project that ties to that job spec, include it. Now they will see that you have worked in that industry, plus you have achieved the result that they are trying to achieve. Okay, that puts you way ahead of a lot of others, head and shoulders. It elevates your status in the eyes of the employer. And once your status is elevated, you are likely to either land the job, get interview spot, or negotiate a higher pay. They would even ask you, when they employ you, they might be able to ask if that salary is enough to even keep you there. It opens doors to negotiate your salary higher. That is what step number four does. All right, step number five, include leading professional body certificates. Okay, including leading professional bodies, don't just boost your CV, but also your legitimacy. This can always be in view, even before you sit for the exam. Prince 2 Foundation Certificate in view. PMP in view. CBA in view. Now, there are keywords that this automated CB review system search for. You match all of those. Before they'll start thinking about asking you too many questions, you guys are already gone through interview. It takes six seconds for recruiters to review your CV. Six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not one hour. Okay? Now, with this strategy, it goes back to Richard Branson's quote, get in there and go about trying to understand that examination body. Book the exam if you want to. Read their book, understand their process. But most importantly, you should know that it is your skills and experience that is more powerful. But all of this is to make you look great in the eyes of the employer. You will still be trusted even before you sit for the exam because it shows that you are a, you are serious about your career. It is way better than eliminating it completely. If you have it there, the employer or potential employer will still see that you are serious about your career. It boosts your interview rate because you would pass through all of the process untouched and boost your potential salary and negotiation negotiation power. Okay, so at least one or two, add them there. Even if you have not sat down for those exams, let them be on your CV. That's why in view was created. Okay, whoever did that has done a fantastic work for us. First degree in view, master's in view, PhD in view. Let them be in view. It doesn't hurt at all. And number five, focus more on your skills and experience. Focus more 
on your skills and experience than certificates. I just mentioned certificate earlier. Now I'm telling you to focus more on these two, okay? Now your skills and experience should be preferred or be, should be preference over certificates and be placed on page one and appear before education and qualification. So those days I made the same mistake as well. My, uh, my detail, David Ageba, QA, blah, 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 summary, then education before experience and then skills. No, the reverse should be the case. Let your experience be on page one. Let your achievement be on page one. Let your skills be on page one. Your education, they can check it later, very close to your hobby. Okay, although skills, education, and experience are the more, most important, are more important than other sections on your CV, you look at the six sections, experience and skills are the most important to employers. You are more likely to be hired for your skills and experience than your qualification. If you have all of the certificates and you just have one year's experience on your CV and somebody else has just one certificate and has 10 years experience on your CV, trust me, the one with the 10 years will be employed, okay? The greater these are, the higher you are likely to earn. So the greater you, your skills and your experience are, and if they match, the employer's expectation, the higher you are likely to earn. I think it's supposed to be five steps, except I've missed one step. All right. So in summary, you can boost your salary by at least 20% or more by tweaking your CV to highlight the value you can bring to the table and never ever ask for a pay rise again. Thank you guys and Q&A. Those of you on Instagram, you can also ask your question by typing in the comment chat box. Sorry? All right, mention your name and then your question, please. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Hi, David, good evening, this is Judith. Hi, Judith. I, I have a question. I, when you were talking about skills, you talked about how you can actually, you mentioned um, stakeholder management is a skill. And now my question is, so if I have to put up my, if, can I break down or break down my skills in, can I break my skills down? Like, okay, I'm, I'm, can I not say something like, okay, my project charter, I have project charter experience. I mean, skills, when I'm writing my CV, can I break the all the whatever down like that on my CV? All right, so um, the first place to start would be go and search for most important project manager skills. Okay, we I break them. In... Pardon? I couldn't hear you. You said what? I said where to, the first place to start is for you to do your research on the in-demand project management skills or project manager skills. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we break them down to um, the what you can do, your technical and your non-technical skills plus tools. That's how we break them down at Advanced Career City. But you go do a search, and then you can now start seeing that. And secondly, apart from researching project manager skills in demand, also go through the job spec. You will see they always include um, the what they expect candidate to have, okay? Yeah. That is also the skills. They always include the skills that they expect you to have. When you go through 10 to 20 job spec, you can now start seeing a pattern. From there, you can now put together a, a data for you to put together on your CV. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank yeah. you. So um, one thing I will say is this. I'm not going to do this for you guys. What I am teaching you guys, do it as if your life depends on it. Or in short, your life actually depends on it. Okay, when I say these things, I don't say, I say them because I say things that I've done and they have worked. 
I'm not teaching you guys theory. Okay, so um, you have to be active because you know the result you are you desire to to get. All right. Hello, David. Hi, David. Hello, David. This is Essie. Hi, Essie. I have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Um, this is fresh. This um, BA is fresh for most of us here. For example, me, I have over 15 years experience in accounting background. How easy will it be for me if I uh, change my CV to be an analyst having like 12 years experience? How easy will it be for me to defend that in an interview? Meanwhile, I've just spent like eight to 10 weeks working on a BA. Yeah, I so, think that is my thing. Yeah. yeah, as an accountant, you have worked through several projects in the past. You have had to solve a lot of problems along the way. You have worked on processes in the past. Okay, you might have improved your communication skills. You would have done presentation. You would have organized workshop. These are all transferable skills. These are all skills that are needed as a business analyst. Even though your job title is not BA, have done the job as a business analyst in your past experience. And I believe through the program, you might have been seeing some similarity of the things you've been doing in the past that you didn't know that this, this is what they are, all right? So that is where leveraging comes in. Make sense? So in defending it, so long as you work on first project with us, second project with us, and then look back through time, you can see that Yes, these skills, I have them, and these are the skills that they need on the job. I tell a lot of people, even before they sign up, if you have gone through a higher institution and you have completed a research project, that is 100% BA, 100%. Okay, now it's left for you to realize this, accept this, and put your CV together so that you can start uh, with your right salary and not the wrong salary. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Hi, Hello, Mr. David. Good evening. Hi. Yes. My name is Richard. Thank, thank you once again for this enlightenment. My question is uh, on the experience of where one has worked before. You know, you have given us the opportunity to use a digital echo as uh, a place where we are working currently. Uh, my question is this, you know, I am in the UK. If you uh, send out application and you are, in, you are called for interview, what if they ask you to bring your P60 or P45? Is that going to be uh, provided to us by digital echo or how can we go about that? So we don't provide pay system or P45 because um, it's not a paid paid job, even though it goes onto your CV as well. Uh, we've had a situation, I don't know if, if um, Mark Foy is here. Um, he relocated to the UK and the same week he relocated in less than, the same week he came to the UK, he landed a job. And they asked him for this same question. Obviously, I let him know that you work remotely. Okay, so you didn't have um, the P, 64 or P45 or P60 when you started the job. I believe you also relocated from um, your country to the UK. All right. So, um, yes. yeah, so you didn't have P45. It depends on there are different circumstances and we deal with them separately. Each circumstance is dealt with separately. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, can, we say, can we say we work with Digital Echo as volunteer workers? Is it can, right? So you can say that, and there are several answers you can give to them, but we deal with each situation uniquely. So there's no one answer that fits everything. Make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, yes. because what I'm saying is that sometimes they will ask you, okay, what are you expecting or what do you want? 
what was uh, your last uh, salary? How much were they paying you? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good evening, Mr. David. Hi. Yeah, my name is Corey. Corey, okay. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, thanks for your uh, enlightenment. Thanks for the, the class tonight. Please, you made mention of um, trying to be focused on your CV. Uh, let's create a scenario. Someone that has worked in HR and probably has worked in other designations and is coming to BA for the first time. And you were saying that we should try as much as possible to be focused when putting out a CV. So are you saying that the person should be silent about the true designation of his uh, uh, former responsibilities and just coin them as BA since he wants to be focused? So I just need clarifications on that. Thank you. Yeah, you've asked the question and you've answered the question as well. So you are correct. Really? Yes, yes it's you are leveraging on your past experience and also the past experience, you have those transferable skills. All right. So yes, you silence about the official job title and then focus more on the roles that you have done that have been created and then highlight that more. Okay, thank you. Hello, so, Hello Mr. David. Let him finish. Korode has not finished, please. Then yes, the lady will follow. Okay, thank you. Um, just want to be very, very sure. Like you've worked as an accountant, just skip the accountant, just put the rules. Period. Yes. Yes, 100%. Thank you. All right, the lady should go next, please. Okay, good evening, Mr. David. This is um, Daniela. I just wanted to ask because um, most of the scenarios that have been painted um, relate more to um, BA. And um, that is like it's easy to have transferable skills for BA. So what I'm thinking for data um, analysts, so how do you bring in those transferable skills? Um, so there's one thing that I mentioned to data analysts, and also let me also say, um, the last data analysis framework, last thing you are expected to do is present, present isn't it? Yes, yes. Exactly. So presentation skills, you would have picked up present presentation skills in the past. All right. Um, you are also meant to, some of the skill sets you need as a data analyst, understanding the business objectives or the reason for the analysis. Okay. Engaging and gathering your data requirement. Okay. The KPIs and co. That is, you need to, that involves communication. So these are some of the silent skills that we focus more on. Technical skill set, problem solving. Even if you are you were in HR, there will be a lot of problems that you encountered in the past. And even some of these analysis that you think we've not done in the past, some of your role involves you using Excel or even yes, using Excel to do some little or simple models before you even get to data analysis. For instance, if you were if if you work as an accountant in the past. There's a lot that relates to data analysis. If you work in a bank as well, there's a lot. If you work, if your data is every everything, and everything is data, it's hardly for you. It's hardly for you to do a job that does not involve data. The project managers they create status reports. Okay, the BA they create requirement, they prioritize. That all involves data. So if you're you're a banking, you create accounts for maybe you are in customer service, all right? But at the end of the day, you give account of how many accounts were created. And sometimes you look at the account, the number of accounts that were closed in the month and so. So this thing ties across everything. It's just for you to be able to see, look very well and see it properly. Okay? Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, Mr. David. Hi. Yeah, can I go ahead now? Yes, you can. Yeah, please. My name is Baron Lidauda. So we and have I'm this sorry. the last question. Sorry. Do you have any other sorry, questions? please. I have a question, please. All right. Can I, can I go ahead now? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like I said, my name is Baron Lidauda. I'm a software tester. Um, you know, I, I have two questions to ask. The first one is, you know, I just came in not quite long ago, and when I got in, 
I actually got in at the point where you actually discover where you're actually talking about skills that we should en endeavor to add more skills to our CV. But you know, a couple of times I've actually gone online to apply for jobs. I discovered that um, there are some skills. You know, the software testing that we did, you know, is really on uh, manual testing. But to some, I actually say I saw some automation that actually cropped in. So I wouldn't know, should I include, I might be an advice to include some of the skills that um, automation tester does as well. And my second point, my second question is, you know, I just came in, I, quit, I actually came in so late, so I wouldn't know whether this video will actually be made available on the group platform. Thank yes. you. Second question, yes. First question, yes, as well. I'll go back to Richard Branson, who I had a quote at the beginning. Maybe I might just go back to that page. It's very important for everything I'm talking about today. Okay, if someone offers you an amazing opportunity, but you are not sure you can do it, say yes, then learn how to do it so now when you go you find out all of these automation skills leave them out include some of them on your cv and try to understand them because this industry is a knowledge industry you are always learning nobody knows it at at the end and guess what you'll be amazed that they called you because of the automation skills on your cv however the job is manual it happens a lot of the time so you are not shooting yourself on the, in the foot or on the foot by withdrawing yourself from opportunities. Go and mess up in the interview. Learn what you learn what you miss. But if you don't have those skills there, it limits your interview chances. And as it limits your interview chances, it limits your your chances of landing um, a job or even landing a job that pays well. Okay. So okay. include them and then go learn about them. Even if you just have knowledge about them, it's better than not having a knowledge about them at all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, Thank so you very my, much. Right. Last my, question. Yeah. Okay. My question is for some of us that have a peculiar career path. Maybe you started your career um, in the so-called corporate environment. Then, due to family, you uh, transition into business, and now. Uh, you are in a new environment, relocation, new career path, being BA. So my question is, how do you now bring all those uh, transferable skills from business and all that to this new career path and still, uh, because at times when I go through some of these, um, what's it called, job descriptions, you are confident in your skill, you know that you can deliver. But because there's no uh, there's no progression, uh, as they, uh, so I don't know maybe your what's your advice? How do we balance that so as to have to land same, that job we desire? It is the same thing I'm saying all over again. Whether this experience is professional or not, okay? You think work in corporate environment? I'm telling you that we have worked with a medical doctor who is now a project manager. How peculiar can that be? A medical doctor that has switched to project manager. And when we did his first CV, he wanted all of those medical stuff. Said, no, that cannot, it cannot work out that way. All right? You have worked as a medical doctor, but you've dealt with patients, you've dealt with projects. A lot of the time, the job are project-based, even though it is not written obviously there. All right? So it is mm -hmm. the same thing. It's just for you to tweak it up. If you don't know how to do it, we also have a service. For those of you that you think that you cannot do it yourself, then you engage us and we will help you to sort that out 100%, which is um, 100 pound, non negotiable. And then our team can write the CV for you by looking back, by helping you to claw back all of those times that you think that you lost. And with that, you will be in a better position to uh, land your interview spot, land a job that pays a lot better. All right? All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. David, can I ask the last question? There are other meetings that are coming up. I'm delaying other other guys. All right. Okay, ask the question Hello? quickly. Quickly. Okay, so I uh, my question is around uh, some people like me. I work in the oil and gas industry, where you have been thrown to different departments in terms of maintenance. So how do you 
put all this, this thing together according to your, your model of the right. Transferable skills. The same thing I've said all over and over again. Okay. Stop looking at the job title, look at the role, look at your responsibility, look at the skill set that is needed. That is what you should focus your mind on. And then look at what is needed in this new job role, and then your CV can be designed that way. All right. So if you have any okay, further questions, there's a question yeah. in the chat, Mr. David. Please can you look at the I'm not in the chat. chat. Can somebody read the chat quickly? Can somebody read it? Okay, it says we are over mm -hmm. 100 mm -hmm. on this call. If the 100 staffs of Digital Echoes apply to same 10 companies, what will be your thought as a recruiter? Furthermore, is it possible to give us another company name? Um, we don't go pick up company name and just share with people. It's a company that we are working with. And then there are companies that have over 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 staff there. All right. And also, these circumstances, if it happens, it happens. But um, it hardly happens because there are millions and millions of companies out there searching for all of you guys to come work with them. All right. We've not had that situation before. Um, that is an assumption that I cannot really say what the future is. I just say things that are more practical. But there are hundreds and hundreds of jobs out there, hundreds and hundreds of companies out there. If, I don't think, if they pick one person out of you guys there, and then you move to the next one. All right? Thanks. All right, sorry, I hate to rush, but um, I think this has been an amazing session, and I hope that you guys got the point. You can start increasing your income just by how your CV looks. Thanks, and thanks for your contribution, and thanks for your um, quietness throughout today's session. Um, we'll be getting information about the next session and probably about the next title. Please, guys, go and implement what you have learned today. All right? Go and implement what you have learned today. Thank you and good night. Yeah, David, if I say good night, let me just add this. There are, please, the jobs are out there. There are a lot of jobs. Please start applying for jobs. The jobs are there. Please. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good night.